So welcome to the TRT and Hormone Optimization channel. And as a guest back with us is Mike from Balance My Hormones in the UK. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks for having me on. Um, it's been a few years since uh, I've, been, I've been on your channel, and it's always good to let the community know what's, what's happening in, in the UK and Europe as far as, uh, as TRT clinics. Yeah, sure thing. You also have a great YouTube channel for everyone watching. Uh, check them out to balance my hormones in the UK. So lately, Mike, you got some attention um, in the media and um, the endocrinologists um, were a bit um, negative about the TRT clinics, weren't they? So tell us that story, Mike. So I, I was asked to participate in an article with the Daily Mail. This happened back in July. I was really ecstatic. I thought, finally, men are going to get uh, coverage on issues of TRT, because if you read the Daily Mail, it's always about women and menopause, which is something that Balance for Hormones does as well. But men on TRT uh, is usually uh, forgotten about. It's not, not a big concern. Uh, but, but they were finally going to do a piece on, on, on TRT uh, in the UK, and they asked me, since my company was the, the first in the UK to offer what I've always said was American style TRT, but with British sensibilities from the beginning, they asked me to come in and discuss that. So I had a nice interview with the reporter back in July, telling her all about what we do, how we make changes in the men's lives, we improve the quality of their lives, how TRT and my own personal story of being on TRT for 20, 26 years has made a big difference in the quality of my life, my, my health span or the quality of my health in, in general. And, and I went into the story of how I was, you know, I was hypogonadal at age 22, and I had to go, you know, uh, get treated by, by a doctor in the, in, in the U.S., and then, uh, then they took me off all the treatment. I've said this story before, and it's on my channel, but I can, I can re reiterate it. And then uh, after probably nearly a year without any testosterone treatments, finally found a doctor that was willing to try me on, on patches. The patches were very inconvenient. I don't know if you remember the patches, Stephen. They're, they're, you know, one or two patches, and you'd have to put them uh, well, anywhere you can put them, really, uh, on your back, um, just above your pubic area. And when I would be at work, I'd be walking around, and you could hear this crunching sound. So you, you couldn't really sneak up on anyone. Uh, but that was my experience with patches, and I found, and he's actually been on my channel, um, this doctor, Dr. Krieger, uh, in California, who invented testo cream, which was a special PLO formulation of testo cream, you know, 20 percent uh, that you would apply to your scrotum. And he was doing this way back in 1995. So I'm telling my story to uh, to the Daily Mail. I, you know, and they basically portrayed me as a a person who uh, was quite muscly, a person who was uh, essentially someone who. Uh, was a big advocate of TRT, is, is, is what they said. I thought it went really well because they asked me if I can come on their podcast uh, that they do uh, a few days later, which, which I did. And I, I, they, called, they said, you come on this time, they would, uh, they would ring me, and they rang me, it was just on audio, so it wasn't like a video podcast. Anyway, long story short, they had me say, my, say a few things about TRT and about the article and my experiences. Uh, but when I listened to the story, it's, I knew things were going to be good, especially when the story launched on, on the Daily Mail on Sunday, in that, <laughs> one, they invited an endocrinologist on there, who they never told me they they're going to do that. And this particular endocrinologist is like uh, the Emperor Palpatine in Star Wars. I mean, he's pretty much, and maybe I'm exaggerating a bit, but he's pretty much not for TRT. You know, he's... Or in, you know, from a TRT community point of view, you're, you're looking at the dark side from, from that point of view, right? I'm, I'm sure he's a lovely guy, but, but the, his, his take on, on not wanting to help men with testosterone is really, really a, a sad story. So if he ever were to get his, his way, then I think lots of men in the UK um, would, be, would be very disappointed. And, and my argument's been, well, hey, this endocrinologist, you know, he had his whole career to help men with low testosterone. Uh, and instead, uh, a lot of times, they just, at least him and his colleagues at the NHS, just fob off everyone who, who isn't the most sickly of sick patients. And I, I understand, you know, the traditional Kleinfelter syndrome and, 
uh, Coleman syndrome, you know, uh, Coleman's, these are, they're bread and butter. But, you know, there's a whole range of people that the data shows, uh, and as we know from the, you know, TRT communities that, you know, are helped in improving the quality of their life and, and their health. And he doesn't see it that way. And, and, they, and, and typically, as always, he tried to, to equate uh, testosterone use with steroid abuse. And, and the article then played into this. Yeah, well, um, I, I can't understand how an endocrinologist can uh, compare anabolic steroids from the bodybuilding world to just helping men. He surely must understand that uh, hypogonal dull state in, yeah, your every uh, day 40 plus man uh, is, is a real thing. He, he, he must be aware of that, that, that these problems are really there. I know, it's, it's frustrating because, and then you ask yourself, are we just seeing a very myopic view? Well, I, I don't think so. We've helped so many patients at the clinic over the years. And what I think it really is, and when you really boil it down, there's a conflict of interest with this particular endocrinologist. And I think many of them, because he also has his own private clinic. And it's really interesting in the article, he tried to demonize the private health care as if somehow this is a bad thing when he also owns a private clinic. These medications are being prescribed by doctors who work at these clinics and obviously consider that they have clinical justification to do that. They would argue that what they're doing is offering a treatment and these men need it. What do you say to that? Well, of course, they would argue that, wouldn't they? Because their entire business model depends on it. So these men certainly want the treatment, whether they need it, almost certainly not if they needed it they would receive the treatment from um, a recognized NHS uh, clinic. Okay. And in fact, and, and I actually called back the, um, the journalist uh, for the Daily Mail because I thought well, we ought to do another piece on it because in reality, we get patients every single day who do not get treatment on the NHS but do fall within the guidance, even the, the British Society for Sexual Medicine's guidance and all the guidance and uh, the, the latest guidance shows that you know, there isn't a magic number for going on TRT. There's a general understood, you know, if your numbers fall within, uh, I think the BSSM guidance is, is under 12 or 13, with symptoms, you know, with two blood tests done, you know, before 11 a.m., then, then there's a good chance that this person would benefit from testosterone treatment. I think even that guidance talks about a trial of testosterone, when many people know that, well, you're kind of on TRT for life. It's not just a trial, but I think that's how uh, some of the doctors deal with other kinds of medicine, you probably know, you start with a trial, if it works, you continue. If, it, if there are issues, then you, then you stop. But that's, um, but that's, that's what's so interesting, is, is this, this conflict that's there. So anyway, the article came out that on Sunday, you know, I was a little bit disappointed. And then a week later, I was given um, a call by um, Kevin O'Sullivan. I, I, and he runs, a, a, he's on this new uh, talk TV, a new channel in the UK. In the Daily Mail the other day, there was a story that caught my eye, island, uh, my eye and it says, uh, Island, I'll, you'll find out why I said that there. The headline says, is the quest for a Love Island body behind a boom in men injecting testosterone? And they thought I got a really bad uh, press and it was very unfair the way they, they try to portray testosterone as dangerous and bodybuilders and... I mean, even on the on the podcast, like, oh, have you seen Mike? Yeah, he's got a you know quite an impressive physique. I've seen pictures of Mike, and he is an absolute fine specimen of a man. Huge arms, guns, guns. His guns are bulging, mm -hmm. if that's the right terminology. I, I thank them for that. That was a nice thing to say. But I know what they were trying to do. They were trying to link the the two. And it was a urologist from about 2015 that had debated against Abraham Morgenthaler, and I think it was something about. It played on the on the dangers of testosterone, and in his, his his presentation, you know, he talks about how he's in disagreement with Abraham Morgenthaler that he doesn't think it's without risk, and this is coming off the back of some studies they did on really elderly patients that they put on testosterone to see if it would improve them, and you know, maybe if you're you know, beyond, I think they're over 60, 65 years old, and they try to give them testosterone, and, and some of them has, had outcomes that weren't weren't. It, it wasn't looking like it was having a massive improvement, though it did improve. Uh, people who had anemia, and it also improved the bone density, but he kind of downplayed all that. And then towards the end, he said, oh, I was a child of the 80s, and I remember this wrestler and this bodybuilder and this guy, you know, they all died in, in, in the mid-30s and 40s. And it's like, well, 
is did back then in 2015 the same thing this endocrinologist is doing now is trying to conflate it and that's it's absurd uh, and really unfair uh but anyway this is why i think you know getting the message out on, on your channel with a you know massive following both in the united states and europe and the uk uh i think people need to be aware that there it seems like there are storm clouds coming there are people out there who would like to see trt only for the most extreme cases and everyone else just have to suffer through just have to soldier on we, we hear the same th things everywhere in the world actually uh, gps are denying treatments uh, denying even the existence of low uh, testosterone symptoms uh, endocrinologists only occupy themselves with um, diabetes uh, maybe thyroid and so on it's the same thing here i i, I know personally a lot of uh, endocrinologists as well but it's the same thing they don't even care about uh, low testosterone symptoms and especially if I am talking to them it's the same thing they're, they're looking at my biceps and they're thinking well you're all uh, into the steroid thing so uh, yeah we don't even discuss that with you it's the same thing here they can't take it uh, seriously it's, it's just one of those those things I, I had a story when I was oh, probably about 15 years ago and I, I went to see um, a new doctor uh, about treatment. And that doctor looked, gave me a look and he said, hey, hey, buddy, you know, you've got, you've got way too much testosterone. He hadn't seen my chart yet. He hadn't seen my levels. I, obviously, I was still on treatment, but he made the assumption that I must be overdoing it because I had, you know, an, an impressive build. And, uh, you know, he, he was going to somehow criticize me for that. And I told him, I said, hey, I, this this isn't what I this isn't what I asked for. This isn't why I came to you to seek help. I came to you for help because you know I thought you're an expert in your field, and this this is that urologist. And um, so he apologized, and I think refunded my money on, on that consultation because he, um, yeah, he he just uh, he just assumed because I kept in shape, watched you know went went to the gym, had, and the testosterone was essentially doing the rest. He assumed that I was I was doing too much, so anyway, lots of people get this the stigma attached to it. So it's it's unfortunate, um, but it's something that I think all of us on TRT will sometimes deal with this um, this this bias, almost a, a discrimination. Yeah, it's the same thing everywhere. And and the funny thing is that a lot of people, a lot of men that are. Uh, on TRT, like a lot of uh, Americans that uh, follow my channel as well, they are all into fitness, they have been into bodybuilding, so those two things really are <laughs> attached a bit uh, for the eye of uh, everyone. So uh, we also stimulate men that get onto TRT to start working out. You know, when, when, you, when, uh, when you first start treatment, you know, you, you get this newfound lease on life, you almost feel like you've gone through a second puberty. And you realize that, hey, I need to start focusing on my health and wellness. And one of the best ways is to focus on your diet, nutrition, exercise. And the testosterone is a fillip. It, it pushes you to, to, to start that over again and, and to focus on, on that part of your life, where in the past, you know, you just kind of dawdled and, and did what you, what you did and, and you, you know, probably didn't get enough sleep. But I think the TRT helps channel, it helps focus your energies towards improving the quality of your life yeah both working out paying attention to food sleep quality and so on and uh, getting your hormones uh, balanced it, 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 it's all for the better it's all for uh, good health and longevity so i can't see why uh, nhs for example would be opposed to that you know we get calls sometimes from patients who were referred to us by their nhs gp uh, which is really interesting that, uh, you know, they, they know about us, they're referring their patients to us because they trust us that we, that we you know, we do, we do a really good job. We do what we say on the tin, we balance hormones. But so I think there are GPs out there um, on the lower, you know, on the lower rung, they're not part of the, they're not the consultants, but the GPs that want to, they want to help their patients and they, their hands are tied and they can't, they can't help them themselves. So now they, they're referring them out, which is, um, I mean, it's, it's good news that you know we're, we're honoured that they uh, refer to us, but um, it's a sad state of the NHS. But I've, as I've always said, you know, there are many options, and you don't always have to rely on public health care to do everything for you. 
and that there should be options on the private side to, to do this. And I think one of the things that's unique about the UK and what we do you know, with, with balanced mental hormones is because like I say we're the first in, in the UK um, and what I say offer the American style with British sensibilities. And part of the sensibilities are, you know, we're a CQC registered clinic. And so there's so much oversight. UK is probably more regulated than, than in Belgium, um, certainly more than the United States. But, you know, we've gone the extra mile to make sure, you know, our, our doctors are, are all up to, up to date with all the uh, continuing education, with all the mandatory training. Uh, this is important, you know, so you, you can't really call yourself a clinic if, if, if you're not CQC registered. And so what we have is a very unique situation where, you know, we have the clinic, we have the TRT coaching and support service, we, we, we offer the blood testing service, and we also offer uh, the medications. And I, I developed this because I wanted to be able to provide the best service for our patients through the clinic, and all, it all works together in a very unique in a unique way. So uh, to support our, our patients, and so that we have uh, a really wide offering of all sorts of things, so we are able to um, have other options like like the US with the Sipinate or the Enanthate, and in different formats, uh, in, including uh, multi dose vials, which we didn't have before. So that's kind of where where, where we go with it. But it, and when I say with the sensibilities, in the past we were limited on what we can what we can do. You know, I think we were one of the first to bring out the creams, the testo cream uh, in, in the UK and, and for Europe. I know you had had, had used some, uh, you know, with us as well. So, yeah, we're doing what we can, despite despite the roadblocks, despite the obstacles out there from, from the endos. Well, thank you for sharing your uh, story, Mike. And uh, if people uh, in UK or uh, even Europe would want to contact you guys uh, to work together with you, how can they do that? The best place to contact us would be at balancemyhormones.co.uk. That's balancemyhormones.co.uk. And there's an online form you can complete registering your interest. You can also find information and some of the videos that we posted on YouTube on our website as well. There are little icons at the top with all our social media links. And there is a separate social page where you can go to look at the latest content that we've, uh, that we've shown as well as our YouTube channel, Balance My Hormones. Okay, so uh, let's wrap this one up, uh, Mike. Thank, thank you so much for sharing. Oh, thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm.